It's a close tie, but, and this is a big but, I think is probably superior. And here's why. You can't lose weight if your fat cells are being signaled to store energy. The only way you do that is by lowering the insulin. And what signals insulin? Blood sugar. If food comes into your system that elevates the blood sugar, then there's insulin and you cannot tap into the energy reserves of your fat stores. Keto versus carnivore diet. Which one wins when it comes to weight loss? On this video, I really want to talk about the keto diet, the carnivore diet, how weight loss and the mechanisms around the hormones and caloric deficit work. And then we're going to finish off talking about the comparisons of the two. So the ketogenic diet was created back in the 1920s and 1930s. Arguably, it was created a lot longer than that, hundreds of thousands of years ago when humans were roaming the savannas in our ice age and we were dealing with a lot less plant foods. We had mainly access to big megafauna animals that were just much bigger in terms of their overall body composition had a lot of fat on them. But the ketogenic diet, it came along and it was used to treat patients with epilepsy. Individuals experiencing epileptic seizures would be transitioned to a ketogenic diet and it would essentially resolve those issues. Humans have a unique ability to run on either ketones or glucose. A lot of people, the majority of people are probably running on glucose. Personally, I've been on a ketogenic diet for several years on and off. I've been pretty pure ketogenic for the last six months. But the idea here is that a ketogenic diet is a diet that's primarily 70 plus percent fat intake on your macros and almost no carbohydrates. About seven or eight years ago, they just became really popular mainstream for weight loss. What we find is that the keto diets and really all the low carb diets like the Atkins diet have been really effective at allowing people to reduce their appetite and metabolically just give themselves energy and stay sustained with the amount of consumptions of calories they're taking in. So the main takeaway here, a ketogenic diet, no carbs, high intake of, of fat. It's done really well to help people with epileptic seizures. We've also seen a lot of people have success with it in terms of improving cognitive function and their overall body composition from going from a fatty, maybe softer body to a much more lean physique that is more trim and lower body fat. One other note to make on the ketogenic diet is that it tends to be more metabolically ad advantageous for human beings. We see less oxidative damage and we see the metabolic efficiency of the diet as more effective. The beta hydroxybutyrate, one of the primary keto molecules that people can utilize when they're in a ketogenic diet, provides more energy to cells per unit of oxygen. So overall, it seems to be metabolically ad advantageous. Fast forward about a year ago and the carnivore diet became very, very popular. Now the carnivore diet is a subset of the ketogenic diet, although some may argue that it doesn't necessarily have to be ketogenic. I would say if you're doing a really, truly carnivore diet, it's going to be ketogenic. It's going to be 70, 80% fat. But the carnivore diet wasn't purely really invented for weight loss. It was largely built for mood, for gut issues, for autoimmunity, and for inflammation. People were finding a lot of success and are finding a lot of success with the diet because it's removing a lot of things. It's premised on the idea that plant molecules can be toxic by nature. Plants do not want to be eaten and humans are largely consuming too many of them as humans and it's affecting our bodies. It's affecting us in negative ways. We see a lot of people experiencing inflammation, gut issues, autoimmunity, things like arthritis, mood disorders, anxieties, depression, and the carnivore diet has been a very powerful way to do that by eliminating compounds that we think are causing some of these issues and helping someone get all the nutrients they need in a very bioavailable form. So here's the kicker. There's a big hormone game when it comes to weight loss. If you just stop eating food or you lower the intake of the food that you were consuming, you're not necessarily going to lose weight. And the problem being your body is intelligently designed as a starvation vehicle, meaning if you lower the intake of food, the body doesn't understand modern world. It's been built and engineered over millions of years where if food doesn't exist, it typically goes into a lower metabolic state. So you essentially turn down the energy demands and you lower the energy expression and the energy utilization within the body. The trick here though is switching the hormones. So insulin is a big, big 
hormone. We talk about diabetes. We talk about health, longevity. And one of the main things with insulin is when we see traditional Americans or humans in general on a standard American diet, which is largely packed with carbohydrates and sugar, we see that they get elevated insulin levels. When you have prolonged elevated insulin levels in your body, that affects your overall metabolism. Insulin essentially is the hormone created by your pancreas and your beta cells to regulate your blood sugar. If you don't have tightly regulated blood sugar, it can be very toxic to your body. It can damage the blood vessels that feed blood into vital organs. It can affect your cardiovascular system and your nervous system. So not having an optimal blood sugar, having blood sugar that goes way too high can be really damaging to your health. And so your body works very hard to maintain that. The thing is ancestrally, we think this can be up for debate, but I think for the most part, most people would, would agree with me that we operated largely in a, in a state of ketosis ancestrally. Our bodies are designed to run on fat. We're not designed to run on carbohydrates. If you look ancestrally, we didn't have access to seasonal fruits, vegetables, things like this all the time. It wasn't a common thing for us to be constantly consuming in our diet. We did have access to animals. We had access to animal fat. We had access to animal protein. And when you eat a diet that's high in fat, you become ketogenic. You shift to that ketogenic state. You're no longer dealing with high levels of insulin. And because of that, your body can now release the fat reserves in your body and utilize that as energy. So the real problem here is you're eating a diet where it's triggering and elevating insulin, which tells your body to store excess energy out of your blood sugar into fat cells. When fat cells receive the insulin signal to store energy, they cannot burn energy. They cannot be removed from your body. You can't lose weight if your fat cells are being signaled to store energy. The only way you do that is by lowering the insulin. And what signals insulin? Blood sugar. If food comes into your system that elevates the blood sugar, then there's insulin and you cannot tap into the energy reserves of your fat stores. So again, if you're restricting calories, but you're not changing the composition of your meal and you're not focusing on lowering the insulin levels, your body is going to continue to think that it needs to store the, the food that does come in as fat and not, not be burning the fat that's in your body. And it, it, it does that by intelligent design to keep us alive in times of fat famine when we, when we historically didn't have access to consistent food supplies. But in the modern world, we want a consistent, high, healthy metabolism that gives us great energy and vitality, and we want to be lean. The way to do that is to lower the insulin. So the ketogenic diet and the carnivore diet are both going to work for you when it comes to weight loss. The reason they're going to work for you is because they're both metabolically efficient. They both utilize this idea of the hormones and your metabolism. They lower insulin. They keep insulin low. They allow you to tap into those fatty energy stores within your fat cells. So both work wonders in that respect. From an overall perspective of pure weight loss, I would say it's a close tie between keto and carnivore. But, and this is a big but, I think carnivore is probably superior, and here's why. Bloating, inflammation, and all the things that come with that can make someone look a lot more fat and less lean than they want to be. And the carnivore diet does a really good job of eliminating issues, GI issues, things that would cause autoimmunity inflammation. By doing that, you naturally get leaner. Your skin gets clearer. You glow. You have more definition in your muscles. It is also a ketogenic diet, so you're going to be burning the fat base and you're not going to be signaling to your body a constant need to store energy as fat that you're consuming. But it also has these nice benefits of removing the bloating, the inflammation, the autoimmune responses that you have. Of course, some people aren't going to be perfectly well on the carnivore diet. And really what I think the ultimate kicker here is dairy. So if you love cheese, chocolate, milk, all the things, cream, all the stuff that comes with dairy, because I know it's in so many foods, don't let this destroy your, your sort of motivation here. We could still, you could still do a ketogenic diet with dairy or even a carnivore diet with dairy. But I want you to keep this in mind. For a lot of people, dairy is not going to sit well. As human beings, we're probably not designed. We, we did not evolve alongside a pregnant animal to drink its milk whenever we wanted to. And, and certainly not in the, 
the amount of consumption that we have in today's society. So dairy can be quite triggering. And we see, especially personally, I see that it causes breakouts, it causes bloating, it causes gas. I do not feel optimal when I consume dairy. I would recommend doing an elimination diet where you remove dairy, regardless of if you're doing keto or if you're doing carnivore, because dairy can be one of the biggest things that causes bloating and inflammation that can make you feel and, and look like you're struggling with weight. But either way, I wanna encourage you to either try ketogenic or try the carnivore. And generally speaking, I think they're both gonna be very, very effective diets for weight loss. If you've never done a keto diet, then you might wanna start with a ketogenic diet first because it's essentially something where you can do a modified carnivore diet but still include food items. Keep in mind that food items that you wanna include and start to kind of remove on the carnivore diet, some of the foods that might be more tolerable would be things like lettuce, olives, avocados. Foods you wanna get rid of are things like the plant seeds. Those are the most defended by plants and they come with the most anti-nutrients and, and generally the less agreeable, more toxic to people. Nuts, grains, seeds, any sort of legumes, beans, those are things that tend to be much more triggering for people and causing GI inflammation, gut issues, autoimmunity. So if you're going from, from no diet and you wanna try either of these, I think you would probably wanna to go to a, a ketogenic diet, which could be carnivore, and then slowly kind of remove these triggering foods. Again, anything that, that's a nut, seed, is gonna be more triggering. And things like lettuce, avocado, and olives might be more tolerable. And then think about moving more and more away from plants in general because they can cause inflammation and kind of narrowing down to just really the core components of a ketogenic carnivore diet. I think ultimately that's gonna give you the best vitality, the best cognitive performance. Certainly is gonna be just as effective as a ketogenic diet with a more broad spectrum of foods because the ultimate fuel that our bodies can run on doesn't need to be a big variety of things. It really probably is better to just give us something that's super clean and streamlined and watch it go to work. So thank you so much for watching at this point. If you made it this far, like this video, make, maybe drop a comment in here. Let me know your experience on either of these diets, what works well for you as far as weight loss in terms of diets, whether it was ketogenic, if you've tried the carnivore diet. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna learn more, I'm writing a book right now about the carnivore diet. It's gonna be out probably later this month or early January. You can sign up for my newsletter to be notified when that drops at carnivorecurts.com. And I'll let you know as soon as that comes out. Either way, let's get healthy and I look forward to talking to you very soon.